I am a huge fan of Telltale's The Walking Dead series. I equally loved the first two. Unfortunately, the third one is nowhere near as good as the other ones, and I'm going to explain why in this video. Now please note that there might be minor spoils ahead due to the type of game it is. In order for me to um, make points about the things that I like and don't like. But I will try to keep the spoilers to a minimum. Alright, here we go. The main character is a former baseball player named Javier. And the basic premise of the game involves you, your sister-in-law Kate, and her two stepchildren survive the zombie apocalypse but end up finding themselves in trouble with a dangerous gang known as, you guessed it, the New Frontier. Okay, so maybe you didn't guess it, but whatever. Now, my, my favorite thing about this game is probably how it often alternates between the present and flashbacks with either Clementine or Javier. My personal favorites are the flashbacks between Javier and his short-tempered older brother David. As you can see, the unfolding of his mentality starting to fall apart, even before the end of the world. The dynamics and conflicts between these two characters are among the best this game has to offer. David! David, knock off the tantrum! Grow up! You just can't resist making your little digs, can you? Once again, it's Javi the Star thinking he's better than me. That's gonna change. What's going on? David, I, I don't understand. You don't understand because you only think about yourself. And I'm sick of it. It's been that way for years. You've always been looking out for yourself. The biggest complaint I often hear about this game was Clementine being a supporting character this time around. That didn't bother me as much, because I had a way bigger problem than just that. Before starting, the, before starting the game, it gave me options of choices I made in the previous games to quote, set up in the third game, which I'll tell you right now, none of what you did in the past games ever affected the present day in a new frontier. Nothing. Because this is Javier's story that just happens to have Clementine in it. Anyway. The last choice was at the end of 2, whether I decided to stay with Kenny or Jane, or go alone with the baby. I chose Jane, because that's what happened in my game. But when a certain flashback in the first episode of A New Frontier occurred, I experienced the alone flashback instead. That's a major fucking issue. This means that there is a glitch in which the game doesn't remember the choice you clicked on when setting up your choices for the game leaving you in, flat, in, a, in a flashback that leaves you confused because that's not what you fucking chose in the first place. This is perhaps the worst glitch I've seen in any video game, as it actually fucks up the narrative of the main story. I, I, I'm not sure how common of a bug this is, but it happened with me, and it happened with a couple of other people on YouTube as well. I have no idea what causes this, but it needs to be patched. This is seriously bad. For me, The Walking Dead is known for its incredibly heartbreaking moments, with very tough decisions to make and lots of gray areas. That's what made the first two games so amazing. This game didn't have any of those for me. It held too much emphasis on gunfights and action shooting segments. There were times when I felt like the game was trying to be more funny than sad. No! These games are supposed to be dark and serious, not... Whatever the fuck this is. Ah, oh, come on, you know the drill. Age before beauty. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> there was only one time where a death of a major character impacted me emotionally because it was the only death that had enough on-screen time for me to reflect the times I had spent with that character. This game was way too fast-paced. Almost every death that was intended to be sad and tragic flies by in a flash. The game doesn't give you enough time for you to process that loss. It's like, oh no, she fell. We need to keep moving. You've got to be more careful. Oh, fuck. Ah! Holy shit. 
shit! Oh my god! Don't! God damn it, no! I'm sorry, man. I know she was important to you. I would have died a long time ago without her. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, my friend. Sometimes when I'm stuck on making a decision, it's not because I care, it's because I don't. Like choosing which one of two equally uninteresting characters you would rather let live or die. I don't give a shit because there wasn't enough character development for a lot of these people you meet along the way. And there are a couple episodes where I chose the popular choice by the community on every single decision. And a few of those choices were by the vast majority of people to the point where it became a landslide percentage. And it signals to me that this game had far less harder to decisions in gray areas than in the first two games. It was more black and white this time. And it, it really shouldn't be that way. One thing I will admit though is that the voice acting remains top notch from most of the cast. At least that aspect of the game remains at peak quality. And speaking of voice acting, the voice of Garrus from Mass Effect plays a badass in this game named Paul. But everyone calls him Jesus because he's fucking awesome and my favorite character in the game. Don't have time to keep looking. They'd want me to get home and warn them. So that's what I'm gonna do. You sure you'll be okay on your own? To be honest, I think my odds are better than yours. I won't forget about you. You have my word. But overall, the game was just a colossal disappointment for me personally. The episodes in this game were shorter than the episodes of the other two. I actually cleared the whole game on the same day, June 1st. I cared less about the characters as a whole. Javier in particular I didn't think was anywhere near liked as much as Lee from Season 1 or Clementine as the lead in Season 2. There weren't enough moments that immersed or moved me on an emotional level, and the fucking flashback bug is completely disgraceful and unforgivable. The game also crashed once for me during the last episode, and there were also a couple instances where the game suffered severe frame rate drops and slowdown, almost to the point of the game freezing entirely. Now, under normal circumstances, I could probably actually give this game as high as a 7 out of 10. It's obviously not as good as the previous installments, but still a decent game in its own right. However, that is not the case when there is a bug that can give you a completely different story segment contrary to the one you chose in the story recreator. And it's because of that that this game unfortunately earns a 5. 0.5 out of 10. Not a terrible game, just not a particularly good one in any way, shape, or form. I could easily compare this game to The Godfather Part 3 or Return of the Jedi as the obvious worst one in its respective trilogy. The first two games are pretty much equally amazing and breathtaking, while the third is forgettable and bland and therefore completely passable. I mean, I really can't recommend it. Get it or don't get it, it's up to you. I'm just here to let you know that A New Frontier simply doesn't live up to the games that came before it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. The Gamer Gods! Fuck yeah! Look at all that fuel! Fuck yeah!